So guys, can you believe this day has come? It's the last one of 2020 and I couldn't be happier about it because finally this is all almost over and I have such high hopes for 2021 because let's face it, as much stress and challenges as we had this last year, <laughs> I remember when we had that much craziness going on out there. So, in terms of perfumes, it was pretty good. Friends kept on releasing pretty cool fragrances. So today we'll be rounding up this year with top 20 of 2020. And to make it uh, a bit more interesting, I decided to divide all these 20 perfumes into categories and feature in it only releases of this year. So, are you ready for that? My top 20 list of 2020 is coming up, but before we get started, and if you're here for the first time, make sure to ring that bell and subscribe button, or just give this video a thumbs up, and then we can begin! Let's do that! <laughs> Yes, 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 yes! I have been waiting for the 31st of December all year long because, honestly, I think from the 1st of January everything will be better. I'm just joking. I'm trying to stay positive. And today I have an exciting top 20 list for you. And since there are so many fragrances I love, I know that I will be very chatty, so definitely grab a snack or something. If you don't need anything, you can power through. I'm fine with that. My top 20 list is here and uh, I'm ready to begin with it. So, as I've said, I created top 20 categories for these perfumes and I will start with something very exciting, which is my most worn fragrance of the year. Do you want to find out what that is? Well, that is Mushin by Malik Perfumes. Ta-da! Here it is. So, the bottle is very interesting and the scent is even more interesting. First of all, it was inspired by Japanese city Kyoto, where you have thousands of temples. And there is burnt a very specific type of incense the scent of which Matthew Malik, who is the perfumer of this brand, recreated, because he spent a whole decade in Tokyo, but his favorite city was Kyoto. And what makes Mushin Kyoto incense perfume special and different from other incensey perfumes is that it doesn't smell churchy incensey. You know what I'm talking about? It smells like the most exquisite incense perfume you can imagine. It smells mysterious. It has beautiful orris root in there, probably that's why it's powdery. It has agarwood in it, so probably that's why it's so deep. It has olibanum note, that's why it is so aromatic. And osmanthus, which is a fascinating flower with a leathery and fruity nuances. And sometimes it is even boozy that I experienced in Mushin. So, there is a whole universe in this perfume, although it's quite linear, you know, it doesn't change much, but I've been wearing it over and over again during the year, and uh, normally I don't wear my perfumes too often because I get bored with them very easily, but that didn't happen with Mushin, that's why I wore it a lot, I couldn't get enough, and I had a feeling the more I wore it, the more I loved it. So, if you want to get magical fragrance, check it out, or maybe you've already bought it because of my rave review, then let me know how you feel about it. And, of course, what's your most worn perfume of the year? Actually, it would be really cool if you could mention fragrances for these categories. So, the categories will be also in the description box, and um, if you're cool with that, you can comment anything that would be fitting for them. I would love to hear your top list of this year. 
And we are moving on to the most addictive perfume of the year, which wasn't hard to choose for me at all, because this is Psycho 001 by the French brand Maison Violi. This has amazing history because it has been around for many, many years, and back in the days it revolutionized perfume industry, it was supplier for royalties, and um, was just very well-known around the world, but unfortunately, after many crises that happened, like world wars, it disappeared from the market completely until just recently three talented friends who met at the perfume school bought it and started to relaunch the collection and created a whole new fragrance which is sustainable, which is eco-friendly, they support bees with it, it looks very modern, like a refillable bottle of water, but this perfume is also refillable and limited, so there is a certain number of bottles available, but once you have it, you can refill it, which is a very cool concept. And the scent is so addictively good! So basically it's aromatically powdery earthy because of iris, angelica, musk, heliotrope and ambraxan. There is a hint of olibanum and spices and to me it's so cozy, it's so grounding and it is very long-lasting. I mean like it's not extremely strong in the projection, well maybe if you spray it up, I just make one spritz and it is very strong, you know, not at the point that it jumps on people and when you enter the room people want to open the window, but there is something so cocooning and addictive about it and I figure out that I really love addictive perfumes, you know, the ones that you want to wear over and over again to wake up in the morning to apply your addictive perfume. Yeah, that's how far my perfume obsession goes. So, Benny described it as sun-kissed skin at the beach and I totally get that vibe because of amazing musk, so I can only recommend it to you and I've been addicted since I first tried it and I still is, so it's the most addictive fragrance of the year and it smells very unisex. Good, let's move on to another super exciting category which is most creative perfume of the year and I cannot really say that I've smelled that many super creative perfumes. A couple of them were out there, but the winner is Orla by January Scent Project. And if you know this American indie brand, then you know that the whole line is very creative. But with Orla, John Beeble, the perfumer, took us to the whole other planet of uh, scents. Well, first of all, it was inspired by the story the Orla written by Guy de Maupassant that I read after smelling this perfume because I wanted to know what's the background story, right? And it's quite mysterious and scary. This perfume is as complex and interesting as the story, but even more cool. Well, just imagine five different perfumes in one, so smoothly blended that you are literally mind blown smelling it. And it's fascinating because in there you'll find contrasting notes like aldehydes which are clean and sparkling, soapy and sharp, and milk which is loctonic, creamy and delicious. So you get the aldehydes with the milk and you get the creaminess, you get the smoothness, you get the spicy, um, milky powderiness that comes from almond and a whole bunch of other exciting stuff in this long-lasting strong fragrance that I've been wearing a lot, I've been addicted to, but it is so creative that I decided to call it the most creative release of the year. And if you want to find out more about it, I interviewed John in the live stream on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do so, because there you'll find all cool people behind these fragrances who I invite to live chats. Right, so let's move on to the next fragrance, which is the signature scent of 2020, and I mean it in a positive way. So I discovered something very special for myself, and it's 2020's new release by Paolo and Tiziano Terenzi for their Quinta Canto project called Isotta, and it comes in an amazing purple satin bottle. They actually released two other ones that are colorful as well, and those are pretty, very oody, but Isotta is hands down my favorite. It's my signature scent that is hard to describe, but I will try. So imagine a tea rose. So it smells rosy and it smells like tea, but you have almost like a powder of something, not makeup, but like powder of 
maybe vanilla, maybe citruses, maybe even grounded tea on the petals of your brows, geranium lifts it up and there is a note of eucalyptus that brings in very interesting facet. And overall, when I didn't know what to wear, I wore Isotta and I wore it um, very, very often. So I find it's something very, very special and it's my new signature scent that I found in 2020. I think people who love pretty looking perfumes will find next category intriguing because it's about most beautiful perfume bottle, which is John Malone's new Gardenia and Oud from the Absolute Collection. Listen guys, when I saw it, this bottle alone, but notes to made me wanna have it, so it was blind buy for my birthday and not only it looks pretty, it's also a very, very good smelling perfume that is woody, but not heavy woody. How should I describe it? It's floral wood with a fruity um, facet of gardenia. I find it looks beautiful and smells equally as beautiful as it looks. And I particularly like this gradient effect, like you have metal on top and fire in the bottom and they come together and they don't fight. It's a perfect harmony between them. So, love it. I keep it in my room so I can stare at it. I love Next Category very much because it is about the funniest perfume release of this year. And in it, winner is Shirley Bubble Bath by Mason Margiela that I wanted to buy so much, which I did actually blindly, because it features note of soap and coconut. I mean, like, that's almost like aldehydes and milk. So I actually expected one of the notes to be not noticeable, maybe imaginary, but indeed, you get the soap and you get the coconut and you get them separately. So it's not coconut and milk, uh, it's not coconut and soap, sorry. It's amazing, it's clean, it's fresh, it smells of soap, it smells of coconut, it smells of clean flowers and it's a lot of fun to wear it. It was actually a lot of fun to review it naked in a bubble bath when I almost burned my hair. You can check out this review, all the helpful information regarding my previous reviews on all these fragrances you'll find down below in the description box. So please check out those ones for more information regarding these. I'm just trying to tell you, you know, essential feeling about these fragrances and that was a lot of fun to wear a bubble bath to any occasion, but mainly work. Let's move on to something glamorous. Yeah, it's um, the most glamorous release of the year. I discovered for myself in December that was my most favorite fragrance discovery of that month, and it is called Nonchalant by the new British brand Ilk Perfumes. For you to get an idea how it smells, just imagine boudoir where you can find a lot of makeup, mainly powder, then bouquets of red roses. What else? Oh, yes, raspberry, dessert, and of course, some alcohol. So, do you get that berry, alcoholy, boozy party vibe? That's exactly how it smells like glam party in a bottle. And I love it for that. It is a lot of fun, but at the same time, you know, it smells playful, mature, and sexy. And I love my nonchalant very much. I will even do this because, yes, I can't get enough. Get it. All love of berry perfumes and alcohol. Get it, and you will have the most glamorous party with perfume you can imagine. With the category for the next perfume, I had sort of a problem, because I first wanted to call it um, best animalic fragrance of the year, but then I realized I haven't smelled that many animalic fragrances, so I decided to call it most anticipated launch, not necessarily only of this year, I even forgot about it, because I smelled it a couple of years ago, fell in love with it, and surprisingly it was launched this year, and I'm talking about Pascual by Sarah Baker. Guys, oh my god, this is literally most... <laughs> I'm speechless about this fragrance. It's 
that good. Well, I can tell you it smells like a horse and green meadow where you'll find a peach blooming tree. You get the green grass, you get the note of peach, you get almost skanky, not fully skanky, but definitely animalic leather vibe. And you know, it's not a warm animalic perfume like a lot of those are. It's rather metallic, it's rather cool and just very exciting. And yeah, I love animalic fragrances, so Bascule for me, it's just like, yes, give it to me, give it to me more. I think it's another most worn fragrance of the year, but you know what? Mushin I discovered in the summer and this one a bit later, so probably I wore Mushin a bit more often, but there is something about Bascule that speaks so, <laughs> so deeply to my heart. I love it, I just love it. Okay, it, this perfume, there is there is something so deeply raw and very very touching about it that I'm personally blown every time I wear it. And once again, I'm bored of fragrances very easily. I get bored very quickly. And Bascule, I think I will never be annoyed by it or anything else. When I don't know what to wear, I wear a Pascual and I just love the sillage and the feeling that it gives me, most importantly. So with that being said, let's move on to the most surprising fragrance of the year. And I also wanted to call it best natural fragrance I've smelled. And it was surprising because it's a great perfume. And those who know me and who know my taste for perfumes know that I'm not the fan of green scents like at all. They need to be very interesting, maybe just a bit green or very interestingly green. And this one I have in my hand right now is green to the max. It is as green as green can be. And I'm talking about Moon Shadow by the Ukrainian indie brand Char Zilia, which means enchanting potions. And I've created a whole overview of this line earlier this year. You can watch it if you want. But I was literally shocked because of this fragrance. It smells like you've spent the entire day or maybe even month in a field or a forest. It is very green. It smells of chamomile, of basil, of oak moss, of lavender, of herbs that you gathered from all over the world and brought to one place and now it has the essence of all the plants and i don't like scents like that at all it's harsh it is almost medicinal but in the dry down something happens it transforms and it turns so pretty i can't even describe it's natural it's a solid fragrance and i had the tiniest sample of it but I was so shocked that I can actually love a green perfume that as my mom was in Ukraine, I bought it, ordered, and my mom brought it to me. So anyone who loves natural or green perfumes, check out this brand and check out this fragrance because it is surprisingly strong. I, you know, dabbed lightly in, applied it here and smelled it for hours and hours and hours. So let's move on to the most affordable, best fragrance I purchased um, in 2020, and that is Zara's perfume. And Zara, or Zara, let me know how it's pronounced correctly in English, um, was on fire this year. They create lots of interesting fragrances that were mostly copies of very popular and expensive perfumes out there, and they recreated them pretty much spot on. Here I have uh, a mochi atelier in Tokyo that unfortunately is only in a travel format and that's because I just unexpectedly, by accident, noticed these fragrances in the store as I was shopping and I was like, oh, are these new? Because I haven't heard of um, the launch or anything and then I smelled them and there was something about it, probably the name, because I love mochi Asian dessert and it smells like it. You won't believe it, but in the opening, when you apply it, it's so dusty to the max, like the mochi thing, because it almost has pow um, dusty powder on it, right? So that's the opening. You get the note of pe in there, which is dry, pe, but then, oh my god, then, oh my god, ooh, rice powder. Rice powder for the lovers of rice powder. I am among them, so I, I was so happy about it. And the dry down literally was like 
Are you kidding me? I did not expect it to turn clean and elegant. You think it would be dry and dusty, powdery, but no, in the opening it's pure elegance. And um, I regret that I couldn't find a bigger bottle. If I could, I would purchase it twice. And you know what's crazy? It reminds me of a discontinued Mason Margiela's Tea Escape and the perfumer behind both is the same. So if you liked that one and you can find this, get it because they are pretty much Oh yes, the same. And honestly, it's so inexpensive and so good, I could cry. It's me in a bottle and I couldn't believe the price for it. I could pay double or even more. So let's move on to the most romantic perfume I've smelled in 2020 and that is Divine Dancer by the British brand Exile Tatum London, which smells of flowers under the rain, you know, when they're so fragile with raindrops on them. It basically captures the scent of spring because you get the note of magnolia in there, which is cool, breezy. You get the air in this composition, many other watery flowers. So it's romantic, you know, it's a lovely. Um, and I loved it as it was rainy or it was cold or, you know, it was just crisp outside. So this is the most romantic launch of the year, in my personal opinion. That's that simple. All right, this next category is a lot of fun because it's Penny's favorite launch of the year. And that was very easy to decide because that's his Flor de Patchouli by Zara from their newer collection Zara Emotions that I've already reviewed earlier this year. Please check out that video, it's quite popular. The nose behind these fragrances is Jo Malone, from Jo Malone. And uh, this perfume, <laughs> this perfume, I actually pointed out to Benny because I noticed similarity with very expensive fragrance he loves a lot from the exclusive collection by Bottega Veneta, Parca Palladiano, that is called Violetta. And for that fragrance I paid 260 euros, well actually a bit less because I had a discount, and for this I paid 15 euros. And they are not fully the same, but I get the similarity because of that clean cat pee mask note, which Ben disagrees with me about, he says it's so gentle, it's so amazing, it's just blah 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 blah, and I started to like it on him, but you know, I've heard it is discontinued, so I asked him not to you know, overspray it, because I noticed he just, you know, sprays it in the room. And I was like, are you out of your mind to spray a fragrance that you like just in the air that is not available anymore? And he was like, oh yeah, to create the mood. And I was like, <laughs> here. But anyway, to get you a better idea how it smells, because I'm sure not a lot of you smelled Violetta, let me know if you did, by the way. Think about your routine. Perfume I don't have good relationship with. But I know it's signature scent for many people. I also smell that cat pee note in there, <laughs> which is in there too. So yeah, here you go. Benny's favorite perfume. He loves it to bits. And those who like sweet fragrances, I have a most delicious treat for you ever, which is Madeline by Mask Milano from their new Le Don de Mas collection that I've already reviewed for you. Make sure to catch up with that video. But Madeleine is a fragrance that has connection with a French dessert Mont Blanc with a note of chestnut, which is also in this fragrance and it brings in roasted effect to a very thick vanilla and um, tuberose with whipped cream on it. There is cypress and geranium in there, which I don't smell. I mostly get a lot of milkiness, a lot of creaminess, a lot of sweetness and beautiful note of chestnut in there that makes it cozy and very sweet, almost edible, best gourmand release of 2020. I'm very happy wearing it and I'm picky with gourmands because often they're just too flat and heavy. And that's all not about Madeline, because although it's edible and sweet, warm, delicious, you know, it smells like perfume that makes me happy and other people around because, you know, gourmands have that quality. So this is the best true sweet gourmand I've smelled in 2020. So the category for the next fragrance is the prettiest fragrance I fell in love with during 2020 and that is 
Aurora, Par Charles Wong, Linda Hof am Morgen. Guys, just imagine the time when you wake up after the best dream you've ever had, you're half sleeping and you're kind of woken up, but at the same time, you know, you smell the fresh air that comes from the spring morning outside, the floral sea, uh, the fruitiness, the magic. <laughs> it smells powdery, fruity, floral. It smells dreamy overall. Love at first sniff, one of the very best perfumes in my collection. And um, yeah, I love it very much. It's the prettiest, uh, the loveliest, the most beautiful fragrance of the year. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's one of those I would like to spray in my nose. That's how much I love it. Okay, let's move on to the sexiest fragrance uh, I've smelled during the year. And uh, you know what? It's quite a simple one. It's not fully sexy. It's like sensual to sexy. And it's a brand new fragrance from a brand new brand called Iho by Nakuna Helsinki. Well, from Finnish, it is translated as skin, which totally makes sense because it smells like, you know, sun touch skin. It's not sun burn skin, sun touch skin. There are quite modern molecules like cashmere, like iso super, sandal woody notes with vanilla, which, you know, with them smells very sensual in my personal opinion. And it's not like a very new smelling perfume because think about Sunny Side Up, they are very similar. But in my opinion, Iho or Iho, let me know if you're Finnish the right way to pronounce it, is a bit stronger and I just find it is sexy. But in this not innocent, but very polite way. <laughs> it's politely sexy fragrance. Here you go. Next, we have the most atmospheric release of the year, which is a brand new fragrance by imaginary authors called Telegrama. And although there is lavender, which is one of the notes I'm not that comfortable with, I like it because you know what? It's talcum powder with lavender. So it's dry lavender that smells like bushes in the garden of the house where no one lives, but it looks so mysterious and any time someone walks around it, it's just like, you know, like in a movie, <laughs> the scene. So it's very atmospheric and I like the vanilla lavender combo in here and also dry talcum powder. So guys, who loves compliments? Well, next category is called Most Complimented Fragrance of the Year, and the winner in it is Ta da! Behold Patchouli by Galha Fragrances. That literally smells like sweet chocolate patchouli with very sugary citruses. And people love gourmands, so they like this intensely sweet fragrance that because of patchouli and tonka smells also niche and luxurious and there is very fun note of cream soda that brings in this you know playful vibe so it's warm it's delicious people love it people ask me what i wear and i like to wear it and i like to collect compliments for it that's a winner so listen next fragrance wins twice. First of all, it's the best fougere release of the year and I've smelled a lot of nice fougeres. Gravitas Par Own though is my number one favorite and it is also best release of a fellow reviewer, Dan, from the channel Mr. Smelly. Now, I know that he loves fougeres. I don't. Basically because they smell too old-fashioned for me and of course, since lavender is in there and, you know, it's not something I'm crazy about, and in Fougeres it's dominant, um, I thought I won't like it, but it turned out that I do. <laughs> well, there is lavender and vanilla, and uh, th there is this almost barber shoppy vibe, but not really. So I don't know how to explain all that to you, but this is the most wearable Fougere I smell this year, so that's where I love it. It smells very classy, and yet, you know, as you have it on your skin. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, anyway, a favorite. That's enough. So guys, since the majority of time in 2020 we spent probably at home, I decided to let you know which fragrance I wore the most 
at home that was launched in 2020 and that might not be a surprise for many of you who has already seen Ray on Midnight Musk and Amber by Jo Malone and I'm feeling bad mentioning it because you know it's a limited edition you can't find it that easily but it wasn't love at first sniff for me because in the opening you get the note of juniper that is a little bit too harsh okay but later it turns so smooth and it's a lot of pleasure to wear it indoors just because it creates a positive atmosphere which I needed during the year and it gave it to me that's why it's a homey cozy friendly winner and finally I guess I will tell you most unexpected launch of the year which is Tom Ford's Bitter Peach that was released right in the middle of my peach obsession I went through this year and I was shocked that Tom Ford released fragrance with a note I was so so obsessed with and as I smelled it I was like um is that angel that I'm smelling in there so it's basically sweet patchouli it's not that peachy it's rather citrusy and fruity and there is this beautiful note of Davana that um, pushes it towards fresh velvety dated boozy direction and I did not expect you know to fall in love with it I didn't but I purchased it for the video for the fact that it's pretty and interesting and the water blah blah well most unexpected and in the end not the worst purchase of the year because you know I'm not a fan of Angel and this for me is a better version of it and I guess that's indeed all right so let's come together Moshin, Bascool, Orla, Cycle 001, Bitter Peach, Behold Patchouli, Telegram, Atelier in Mochi, Midnight Mask and Amber, Isota, those are 10, Bubble Bath, Gardenia and Oud, Gravitas for Ohm, Eho, Divine Dancer, Nonchalant, Aurora, Flutter Patchouli, Madeline, and did I forget something? Right, the Moon Shadow. We have our well, my top 20 of 2020. Of course, there were more interesting launches. Unfortunately, I didn't purchase in full size, but I'm excited to what next year will bring us. Let's stay positive, guys, and I hope we'll start the year with this energy you got from me today. Of course, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Let me know in the comments whether your top 20 or your feedback on my top 20 or anything else, and definitely stay tuned for future content and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I guess that's all and um, we'll see each other tomorrow in the new year. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the